it's one amazing person, and today I will be reading to you Buddy, the first seeing eye dog. At the back, you will see the levels. This one is level four. Morris Frank was blind. He needed help. Then he met Buddy, a seeing eye dog. This book has nine chapters, so it has three parts. This part is part one. The book is illustrated is illustrated by Don Bolognis, and it is by Eva Moore. Chapter one: Gala and Kiss. Two dogs were playing in the spring sunshine. They were frisky young German shepherds. They lived in a place called Fortunate Fields. It was in the mountains known as the Swiss Alps. Many German shepherd dogs lived at Fortunate Fields. They were trained for important work. Some became police dogs. Some learned to deliver messages. Some were taught to find people who were lost. A woman came walking up the hill. Gala, kiss! She called. The dogs raced over to the woman. She was their owner, Dorothy Eustace. Dorothy was an American, but she, but she had, but she had come to live and work in the Swiss Alps. She raised and trained at Fortunate Fields, and trained the dogs at Fortunate Fields. Gala and Kiss were almost old enough to begin their training, but they would not become police dogs or or rescue dogs. They would not be like any other dogs born at Fortunate Fields. Something new was about to happen. Chapter Two: Dog Guides. Over the years, Dorothy Eustace had come to admire German Shepherd dogs above other breeds. They were smart and loyal. They could be trained to help people in many ways. Dorothy had even seen. Pictures of a shepherd dog in Germany leading its blind master safely across a busy city street. At first, Dorothy thought the pictures must have been faked. For hundreds of years, blind people had depended on dogs to be their ears. But how could a dog, even a smart one, be trained to ask, act as a blind person eyes? Then Dorothy found out that there really was a school in Germany where shepherd dogs were trained as guides for soldiers blinded in battle. Dorothy had to see this for herself. In the summer of 1927, she went to visit the school in Germany. There, she followed a blind man and his dog as they took a walk along the wide city streets. The dog had a special harness with a long, stiff handle. As the man held on to the handle, the dog steered him around. 
around lampposts, baby carriages, and other people in the street. They walked along so fast that Dorothy had a hard time keeping up. When Dorothy got back to Fortunate Fields, she could not stop thinking about what she had seen in Germany. If only every blind person could have a dog like the one she had seen. Seen in Germany. If only every blind blind people would no longer need to depend on others to get around. They could go to and from work on their own and not be afraid of crowds or traffic. Best of all, they would never again have to face the darkness alone. There's Dorothy. Chapter 3 Something new at Fortunate Fields. It was a new year. It was a new year at Fortunate Fields. And for the dog named Tiss, it was the beginning of of a new life. She and her playmate Gala were being tra- trained for work as dog guides. Dorothy had sent one of her best trainers Jack Jack Humphrey to the school in Germany. When Jack returned, he knew how to teach a blind person to go to work with a dog. Kiss was a good pupil. She quickly learned the most important rule. To obey, she learned to understand simple commands. Sit, come, right, left, forward. She learned that she learned to sit when she came to a curb so that her master could feel the edge and step down safely. She learned to walk around objects lying in the street, and she learned to make a wide path around low tree branches and under other other dangers above the ground too. She learned to bark. She. To learn to bark if someone came too close. Now, Kiss was ready to start work. She had been chosen to be Fortunate Field's very first dog guide. One day, Jack led Kiss into the large living room. A tall young man was waiting there. Here is your dog," Jack said to the man. The man held out a piece of meat. Kiss's Kiss's cool, wet nose touched the man's hand as she gobbled up the treat. The man was Morris Frank. Morris was blind. He had come all the way from America for a dog guide. What does she look like? Morris asked Jack. She has a dark gray coat with a creamy patch under her chin. Jack told him, "Her name is Kiss." Morris moved his hands over the dog's body. He felt he felt the strong shoulders and back and back. He patted her head, then got down on one knee and put his arms around her. "Kiss," he said. That's a terrible name for a dog. I'm going to call you Buddy. From then on, no one ever called her Kiss again. Bye, guys! Thanks for watching. See you at part two.